So who you, who are you <laughs> voting for, bro? <laughs> <laughs> We are today is election day. Big day today. Big day today. We're going to see if America's smart or dumb. We're going to see if we're going to have cheaper groceries or go to World War III. Listen, bro. <laughs> I went to Target. I literally bought my sons like two pairs of... And by the way, we're wearing glasses today because this is the vibe. Because I don't have my lashes on and ain't no way I'm getting caught out here in these streets like that. And I'm that. a good support system. So Thank you. Them. That's my brother. I was like, yo, we're wearing glasses today. He was like, all right. He, right, he jumped right on board. Anyways, so I bought these kids like two pairs of pants each and like a couple little things. Some groceries, not like me or anything. $500. Sheesh. Literally, my kids were like, <gasps> I was like, yeah. From Target? From Target. That's crazy. From Target. I was like, this is crazy. I don't know how people are making it in this economy. <clears throat> That's crazy. You know, I didn't buy clothes for eight years. I believe you. From from like 10th grade, 9th or 10th grade, mm -hmm. to like 26 years old. Why? I just never cared Did for you, clothes. Do you have decision fatigue where you just feel like you have to wear no, black not, all the not, time? Not that, that's, no, that's a thing. It is a thing for sure. No, I'm just, I like to keep it simple. I just don't care for clothes. Like I could, So every time I got any clothes, either a family member getting me a piece of clothing, an ex, or one time I had a roommate and he like moved out. And he mm -hmm. like, you just take all my clothes. I'm like, all right, bet. Mm -hmm. So I, would, I haven't bought clothes for like probably eight years. And then eventually when I was 26, I bought some clothes, but... You bought yeah. like three pieces like and two, it three cost like ten thousand dollars. <laughs> no, 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 no. Three cheap old jeans and got nah, nothing. No, nah, I don't spend money on clothes. I bought one stupid Louis jacket. I remember you bring was, it up every time. Bro. I could, it, it, I, it makes me so mad. It was such a waste of money and yeah. it was so dumb. Yeah. And I just, it's just in my closet. I can't get rid of it. I bought this one Louis crossover bag. I gave it to my dad. I'm like, this is dumb. The other jacket doesn't fit me, so it's like it doesn't fit you anyone. Got bigger. No, it fits me. It doesn't fit anyone else. So I'm just like, I don't know who to give it to. Like, it's just dumb. It's, I'm never spending money on clothes again. I got these shoes, gift. Like, not these shoes, but uh, nice designer shoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not spending money on clothes. It's the biggest waste of money. Yeah, but these kids are growing every five yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, no, obviously different. different. I'm like, yeah. golly, you need another outfit again? Oh, my God. Like, Liam is just, That's his, his feet are, like, bigger than mine. Yeah, yeah. He's... <sighs> 12 12 yeah i was like wow bro you really like i blink he's grow blink grow blink grows i'm like ah Ooh. let me see i got some notes for us well so we're, i like this flow we have where we go one motivational episode one tactical episode you know like mm -hmm. one that they can apply to their business to grow yeah. but then the other one is to apply to themselves to grow because you need to have that self-awareness that self-growth in order to grow your business so today this, I heard this bar, and I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, Rose is going to like this one. Okay. So success is available for everyone, but it's not guaranteed. Because success, it, there's so many opportunities. Everyone can get it. It's out there for everyone. We're all, we all have the same 24. We all ha yeah. have majority of the same opportunities, but it's not guaranteed. And once you have success one time, doesn't mean you're going to have it again the next. Mm -hmm. Or just because you had two, three good years in business, doesn't mean you're going to have it again the next year. So it's like... Success is available, but it's not guaranteed. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, I kind of, I'm on the fence about that because I feel like once you develop yourself into the person who can make things happen, for me, maybe it might take you longer, but at some point you're going to hit that success. Like, for example, I dropped out at ninth grade. Like, I literally, I know people who have gone to Ivy League colleges and I'm more successful than them. For sure. So mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, as you develop into the person who can make things happen, you make the right decisions, you're consistent, you're disciplined, you refuse to be denied. Like right now, I could open up other businesses and I know I will work hard until they're successful. So I don't know, maybe so guaranteed if you're just dropping the, not guaranteed if you're dropping the ball, if you're lazy, if you only work when you feel like it, then that, I feel that like. That right there is what I mean. That right there. Oh, okay. You're right. I get it Because now. you're right. Everyone has that opportunity yeah. for success. But you have these external resistance you have to fight and the internal resistance mm -hmm. you have to fight. Yeah. And sometimes you get to one level and then the external resistance, whether it's the government, whether it's the industry saturated, whether it's 
you get a leak in here. So you get something external that makes people quit mm -hmm. and they don't get success because they quit, mm -hmm. you know, or yeah. internally they don't, they're not able to fight these internal battles that gets them to the next level. So and you, you literally, you nailed it. Yes. Yeah. Everyone, it's out there for everyone. It's guaranteed, but it's not guaranteed because they don't fight those internal battles. Yeah. And I feel like, like you said at the last podcast, you have to work harder on yourself than you do on your business because you know, feeding your mind the right things, uh, being consistent and all of that, as a byproduct, you're going to do the things that you have to do in order to build a big business. And so for me, you know, I was talking to somebody earlier and I was like, man, people really romanticize what it is to be a business owner. They're like, oh, I want to I wanna work for myself, not understanding that what you do at your job, you're going to have to work 500 times harder, longer, more years, freaking sacrifice. You're working 24-7. People overestimate what they'll make and underestimate how hard they're going to work. Pit, bro, that needs to be on a shirt. <laughs> you know what we I'm saying? We need to put that on a shirt. You nailed because, it. You're nailing it, though, seriously. Because, like I told you last time, they're like, oh, my boss is making all this money. Listen, bro, your little 40% is not changing my life. Mm -hmm. It's not. And it doesn't change the life for somebody that has an overhead, that has to pay bills and all of these things. So really, most people don't have the work ethic to be successful. That is the number one point. And I feel like in America, people are very entitled. Like I have a lot of conversations with my daughter. You know, she's in college. Most of these kids think that, you know, they should win just because they're here. Mm -hmm. And my daughter's like, uh, actually, that's not how that works. Like, you have to actually work. So she's like counterculture in her school. Like, Which is crazy that that's the counter of the culture. That's the counterculture. Yeah. So they're like, oh, you don't drink? She's like, bro, I got stuff to do. I'm trying to make it into, it. I want to be a surgeon. I don't got time to be. So even at her young age, she has kids that are like, oh, you're a square, you're boring, you're this. But the girl is laser focused. And in some years, because what happens is that you don't realize how fast the years pass. Like, look, we're in November. Crazy. November. Literally in a few months, I will be in this business for three years. Crazy. Like, I blinked three years. Crazy. Which is the same thing that's going to happen to these kids. from day one. Which yeah. from day one, that's Duh. wild. Three years is crazy. Yeah. And so what's going to happen in three years, these kids are going to look back. They're going to look at Natalie. She's going to be freaking interning somewhere, successful. And they're going to be like, oh, crap. You know, probably we shouldn't have been drinking and doing and you know, drugs and <clears throat> doing all that. And I want to give a note to, to Natalie, too, like because I think her self-talk is going to be super important because yeah. I did the same thing. You know, I don't drink. I, don't I do brought drugs. you up. And I want her to understand, like, when she's making the sacrifices, when, whenever I wake up, mm -hmm. whenever I turn down a drink or I turn down a party, I turn it down, I'm, I'm reaffirming to myself why I'm going to be more successful. And every time I do it, I'm just like, I'm going to be more successful than that person because I'm willing to sacrifice more than him. I'm doing what others won't do to Correct. have what others won't have. Exactly. They can't, they know, not that they won't have, they can't have. Because they're not doing what I'm They'll doing. They'll never attain it. You know, it. so I always tell myself that. And that's just constantly my self-talk. When I wake up at 3.30, I'm like, oh, everyone else is sleeping. I'm up. Like, that's the only thing that gets me up. Because mm -hmm. if not, I would fall. I would sleep. I would stay in. Yeah. You know? It's like my my internal self-talk. And that's that's a level of res That's an internal resistance that a lot of people don't get past. And you know what? It's something that I've never told her, hey, you got to do this. She's choosing the harder path. That's what most people are not willing to do. They want to they wanna have both. They want to be able to drink, party, live a crazy life, yeah. and be successful. Yeah. Bro, like, nothing that successful people do, you'll find the people at the club doing. It's just not possible. And, and you know what? We're not going to say it's not possible. You know why? Because some people will give you an example. What about the, the baddie girl? What's from Dr. Phil? Um, bad Barbie. Yeah. She did. She has no skill That is an anomaly. Set. It's a, that's what I'm trying to say. They'll try to find that one anomaly and be like, yeah. but they did it. Because I know a friend that's worth a few hundred million that oh, I'm sure. is I'm not. I'm sure, but what, that doesn't, mostly that I, will never that's happen. That's what I'm trying to say. That's not the majority. <laughs> yeah. That's not so, but like, if you want to guarantee success. Correct. Don't do what the few anomalies are doing. Do yeah. what majority people did to be successful. They sacrificed. They gave up yeah. weekends. They fought those internal battles. Mm -hmm. They fought the external resistances. They did all that to get 
to that next level. Yeah. And so when Natalie was like, Mom, it's like I'm living in a in an alternate universe. Like these kids really don't don't see their they don't see what's ahead. They only so see to the today. She's gonna dominate. That's why it's so Bro, easy for her to be successful. This little girl, man, like she, the way that she thinks is so different from, and you know why? Because she was homeschooled. <clears throat> yeah. She was homeschooled, so she wasn't caught up with the boy crazy yeah. girls and the with the drug scene and all of that. And now she's like these kids. The, the way that she rants, she sounds like a forty-five year old person. Mm -hmm. But she's like, mom, I'm locked in. Like, I know that what I do now is going to determine how I live the rest of my life. And for an 18-year-old to understand that, you know, and they're like, oh, you're doing too much. It, it, it ain't that deep. They tell her all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, Natalie, understand that you live the, the life that you're living right now because me and daddy decided to be counterculture. And there's not a lot of people who do that. They want both. And that, that's what people are. Oh, people... give me my... We're, we're stopping this for that. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. And it's for the boys? Yep. Salud. You know what salud means? Yeah, like... Cheers. Cheers, yeah. I hear blood right <laughs> Um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I forgot what you were saying, but... No, the, the being counterculture. In order yeah. to be successful, oh, yeah, you see, have to. And kids, they don't do as you say, they do as you do. Yeah. You know, they saw what you guys are doing, what mm -hmm. you did, and they followed suit. You know, mm -hmm. not because you told them, this is what you need to do, this is the right thing. I'm sure you did, but you did it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And you have to be around people. Like, your daughter, thankfully, was around you guys to see. And let me tell you something, because obviously we weren't always this successful. When Natalie was five years old, Jose and I were so broke that we had to sit her down and have a conversation about we could only get her one little gift for Christmas. And we got her the, the little bake oven, you know, the mm -hmm, little bake mm -hmm, thing mm -hmm. that all the little girls want. We had to scrounge up the money. So like her at five years old and seeing her now, like her kids are like, your mom's assistant is coming to pick you up. Like they don't get it. But Natalie saw the choices, the, the struggle, the my parents couldn't afford a Christmas gift, but now look at how we're living. So I think that her physically like witnessing going through it, yeah. Not yeah. having nothing to today honestly gave her that work ethic that if I work hard, I can be just like that. And that perspective to like, hey, I never want to go back to that. Yo, for real. Yeah. My boys, they're they don't get it. Because yeah. they weren't around when mm -hmm. that stuff was happening. But because she's my oldest, she saw the struggle, she saw the decisions, she saw the work ethic, she saw all of that. And in order for people to be successful, you really have to sacrifice. Sacrifice and be consistent. If you can't do that, then just go work at a job. And, and one thing also that I've been, you know, because over the past four years, mm -hmm. I've helped, I, I keep track, 511 people quit their job and go full-time with the lashing. Wow. Yeah, 511. I just had a, two of them yet Congrats, last Congrats, bro. Appreciate it. Now, not to me. Congrats to them because they no, quit. No, bro, but still, you you it's, had the, the vehicle. It's you know crazy, what I'm though. So, so 511. Mm -hmm. But what I constantly tell them, and lately this has been a trend I've been seeing the last few weeks, I'm like, hey, you're going to have to work way harder than you're going to be compensated for yeah. for the first three, six to a year. I almost tried to talk them out of it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, like this might not be for you. This is hard as shit. Yeah, you do this all the time. You, Because I don't want to be the reason that you call me crying, like, why did you do it? No, I, mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, I tried to talk you out of it yeah. because it's really difficult, and you're going to have to work three, six, 12 months, I'm just being generous, even yeah. longer, mm -hmm. without being compensated. And then eventually, you're going to work way less and be compensated way more. Right now, I can just give out a loan. I'll get paid $12,000 in three months, and I won't do any work. Yeah. You know? But when I used to work at Taco Bell, for me to make $12,000 took eight months of me grinding mm -hmm. solo in the drive through taking orders, making the drink, handing out, getting the cap. It was so hard. Yeah. Taco Bell was so hard, dude. Like, I grinded for years. I saved a lot of money from Taco Bell. Yeah. But I worked really well, you, hard to make no money. You have discipline, bro. But, yeah. Yes, for sure. Of course. I mean, that's my cornerstone is my discipline. But a lot of people don't understand. You have to work very hard for a very long time without getting compensated for what you think you're worth. Yeah. Then eventually, there's going to be that hockey stick growth to where you're going to work way less and get paid way more. Yeah. So, like, right now, I feel like I'm, I'm in that hockey stick. Sure. Like, I've been yes. grinding, yes. grinding, grinding, yes. just dying, bro. Yeah. And now I see the, 
it's almost like you work, 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 like that guy said, 1% better. Work, 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 you make no money, 1% better. Work, 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 until one day, it's like it happens overnight. But then the key now for you in your stage is to keep going hard. Oh, why? It's you know the what I'm only saying? option. You know, it's just you keep going hard, although you're getting paid way more than what that work you're actually doing. Uh-huh. You keep going hard, and that's how you get that crazy growth to where you're just out of this world and you're killing it, you know? Because that was a mistake I made. Like, I was killing it, and I kind of took my, I was well, chilling. that's why I have you. You know? So you'll sure. be like, Whoosh, what are you doing? Because <laughs> I was chilling for a little bit, then now I'm back, back foot on the gas, coming out with a bunch of stuff. So it's like, that's that's the level up right there. Well, you have to go through it though, to where you're like coast a little bit and be mm-hmm. making a ton of money. Mm-hmm. And then you're just like, oh, what am I doing? Like this, yeah. this sucks. You know, like I'm going down because a lot of people don't understand. Your I, I talk about this all the time. Your last a thousand days, your last a hundred days is what got you here. Yes. So when you kill it for two, three years. You're gonna be at that high level, but then if you, let's say you're still at that high, that's that. This is that facade that we get when we have some success because you're at that high level, and you're making money, but you're not working as hard anymore. So you, you're you're working like you're this, but you're still making money. Yeah. But then those thousand days catch up to you, and then eventually you're like, damn, I'm not making money anymore. I didn't develop any new skills. Like because you didn't work that last thousand days. So but you so still killed it, you- and you think you're killing it, but you're not. So that's you're what, not planting. So when that, the harvest seasons come, you got nothing. Cooked, and that's why you the issue. You got nothing. That's what that is. And the issue is a lot of people focus on the outcome and the result. And that's the biggest mistake you can make. Yeah. You can't focus on the results or the outcome. You have to focus on what are you doing mm-hmm. on a daily basis to get 1% better. Yeah. And that's the game. And once people can make that shift and remove and detach their emotion from the result, they will be successful. I said that at the keynote, this girl came up to me. She was telling me, you know, all the issues that she had been having. I'm like, disengage from the outcome. Just do the work. Because if you're always thinking of, oh, my God, look, this is so far. You're never going to do it, bro. You have to just work. Nobody that has literally been consistent, disciplined, and sacrificed and worked hard you're going to tell me that at the end of that, you're not going to see results? There's no way. And there's no time frame, though. It could take a year. It could like, take five. I don't... It could take ten. But, the end, but you will always get that result. And let me tell you, when I started lashing in my mind, I'm like, this is going to take me five years. So all the, the last two and a half years, I've been like, <clears throat> I still got two and a half years more. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't even... That, the best part about that, the five years is going to go by anyway. Thank you. So you might as well do something with those five years. Mm-hmm. You might as well keep your foot on the gas and grind and figure things out and yeah. learn. And I was talking to my assistant about this yesterday because I, I sat her down and I'm like, hey, I don't want you to work for me for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Like, I need you to do something else. So what are you going to do to develop a skill? I'm like, mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, progression equals happiness. Yeah. So I'm like, you need to figure something out because you're not going to be with me for longer than a year. Like, although you make my life a lot easier... You need to figure something out because mm-hmm. you can't just work for me for the rest of your life. Like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm dope as hell, but you got to figure something out. He can't help I, it. I can't help it. He I can't, can't, help, I can't it. help it. But <laughs> you got to figure something else out. So I'm like, what do you like to do? What do you want to do? I want to do nails. I want to do this. I'm like, cool. You got to work towards something. Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, you just, you have to progress and you can't just coast. You you can't coast like and i learned that from you when you were like oh i got complacent i was like oh snap i was shocked that you said that because i you know every time i go you're working so i'm like damn like he really like had a wake-up call almost because you're still making money but you're like oh crap i could have been grinding harder yeah and so now that's always in the back of my mind like i have to leave here and i have to work right and a side note to that though is like my thermostat is raised so high mm-hmm. though. so it's like even me coasting i'm dominating everyone else because uh, they have coasting put in the work. is my coasting not is normal. someone's yeah it's not normal but it's not to the level where like i'm not revving at a higher engine than i should be like i should be going harder you know what i'm yeah. saying but my coasting still dominates everyone else but that's i can't i'm not competing with everyone else i'm competing with the the crazy billionaires you know what i'm saying yeah, so like, i need to compete at their level like yeah. how does elon musk have five multi-billion dollar company that's crazy bro five multi-billion not one five dude all worth a billion dollars significant billion. i mean there's just levels to and this. i bet you that he was one of those people that sacrificed that wasn't you know doing the dumb have stuff you read his book he has a big book I have incredible been. the kid's been grinding since he's i mean he's obviously an ultra genius but yeah. nonetheless i mean since he came up with it he sold his first company at like 14. He started programming when he was like 10 or 11. It was just like, success leaves clues. 
Yes. He didn't party. And there's he didn't levels drink. to it. it. There's levels to it, but success leaves clues. So Elon Musk, since he was 10, 11, grinding, focused, Warren Buffett, bought his first stock at 11 years old. Like all these people, success leaves clues. Yeah. They sacrifice their 20s, their 30s to really reach high levels mm-hmm. at, at 40, 50, 60 years old. You know what I'm saying? And you really have to. The years pass by so quick. If I just turn around and I'm like, yo, I feel like I had Natalie five years ago. Yeah. And she's 18. Yeah. It's the years fly past you. So really do. either you're going to decide that you're going to work and it's going to be harder than you think. It's going to take longer than you think. And you have to just be OK with that. There's nothing wrong with being in the trenches for year after year after year. Just focus on the work. Don't look at what everybody else is doing. Don't look at other women's success as a threat. Like it's I really can't. For people. Yeah. Not me, bro. That's a little girl game. Yeah, it's yeah. a little girl game. If you feel like another woman is one upping you because she's working, you're a little girl. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Like you're not a woman. For I sure. play with women. I don't play with little girls. People struggle with that. that They compare, you know, they compare. For what? Not you're not the same person. Like it doesn't make sense. I get it though. No, I get it. I get it. like, damn, like I no, I, I my see. beef is when they make you an enemy because you doing better. I'm of like, then work do. as hard yeah. as me then. You know why though? Because when you reach a certain level of success, you're a mirror. You're a mirror. Yeah. You're, you're reflecting I love it. their laziness. You're reflecting Mira. their... <laughs> I love you know what I'm saying? being a mirror. <laughs> but the, that's what I'm saying. When you re- and, But to another point, when you're reaching success, that's why family members might start to be like, what are you doing? Like, you're not going to make any money with this. This is just a side hobby. You can't make money lashing. This is just a job because you're mirroring every bad decision they made, yeah. all the decisions they made to not take that inve- investment into a program or mm-hmm. to coaching or do their new business. You're just mirroring all of their Bro. insecurities. And you know, you want to know what's so funny that when they hit a roadblock, they're just there complaining about it. That is another thing that will keep you not successful. So whenever I don't know how to do something, I outsource who can help me get to the next stage. How much does it cost? If they told me $1.2 million and I have $1.2 million, that's how much I'm going to yeah. pay. Why? Or... The other side of it is I'm going to struggle. I'm going to get frustrated. I'm going to keep on thinking and rethinking and rethinking. And in the end, the next person that took quick action is going to be multimillionaire while you're sitting sitting here complaining about why this is not working. That's why success is is available but not guaranteed because a lot of people will hit that roadblock and just complain when others will be resourceful and figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, success is not guaranteed. Listen, now that I started my mentorship, every time I sit with a girl, what is the issue? They tell me their issues, and yo, I am a beast at the things that they struggle with, right? I'm like, oh, this is going to be easy. But they're paying me for all the knowledge that I've acquired over the years with mentors, with business people, all this stuff. And I know that I'm going to make them a star. They ha- I'm like, listen, you got to come alongside me. I can't do this for you. But if you're willing to work and you're willing to follow instruction, be moldable, be accountable, yo, there's nothing we can't do. Yep. And like they all make quick decisions because they've been in one place frustrated for so long that they're like, okay, I need help. We shouldn't wait till that point though, because at that point you're almost like, I don't want to do this no more. Yes, you know what yes, I mean? Of course. So it's also making quick decisions with things that you know are gonna grow and scale your business and Help you personally, honestly. I mean, that's why coaching is so effective, though, because someone's already Bro. went that road, traveled. You know what I'm saying? Like, I so I mean, when I paid $100,000 for a coach, that changed everything for me. He just told me four things to do. My first month, I doubled my business. Doubled. You know how hard that is? First month, he said, hey, that's do, crazy. do this, 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 and this. You're going to tell me what those four like, things are when you get But I'm like, I don't want to do that. And he's like, well, <laughs> then. He's like, I, don't, I was like, I don't want to do that. He's like, well, you're not going to make any money. I said, all right, cool. Did it. Literally doubled. Mm-hmm. From, so you from need to get on TikTok. Quick things. I, I will get. I am on TikTok now. I'm stepping up. I'm, I'm gonna but go I'm saying, look. But the point is, for coaching, it's just so effective, and not just that though. That's just in business. Like mm-hmm. when I have a family, I'm gonna reach out to people that have families that I aspire to, and I'm gonna talk to them. Like mine. I'm gonna get info. If 100, I'm gonna get information <laughs> from. Like a lot of people only put it down to making money. Or, no, it's in every aspect of yeah. your life. You want to be good at a sport. Get someone that's really. You have to get people that are doing what you're doing and you just talk to them and just ask and pay for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's why my boys train with UFC fighters. I have to pay these people to do one-on-ones. It just fast-tracks your rate of success. Have you not seen Landon's Triangle? Mm-hmm. 
bro, like he would have never learned that in a group setting. Yes. The coach is like, this is what you're doing. He fights a grown man twice a week, okay? And he's eight. Imagine when he's 12. Yep. You know, the other day they were fighting at the house and I'm like, what is all this noise? I go in, Landon has Liam in a triangle. I'm like, let go of your brother. Crazy. <laughs> but, you know, I'm paying because I want them to do well. If you want to do well, you are going to have to seek out the people and, that can help you get it done. To what Landon and Liam are doing, though, in order for them to be successful mm -hmm. at jujitsu, mm -hmm. they need to get tapped out every day. They need to be put under high levels of stress. They, oh, need, yeah. to, they need to show up every day. They need to train and practice. They need to get over that internal battle of, I'm not good enough. Liam's older than me. This, this dude's oh, way Landon bigger than me. Oh, Landon don't have that. I know, I know, I know. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Like, there's those, those internal thoughts, yeah. though. Yeah, I just got tapped out in front of everyone. This is embarrassing. Mm -hmm. It's like they have to fight that. They have to show up every day. They have to train. They have yeah. to learn. And that's how they're going to be successful at jiu-jitsu. And that's a direct reflection of life. Yeah. You know? And there's a direct reflection of you need a coach to get you to the finish line. 100%. Because Landon's only been doing jujitsu like six months. He's already a gray belt. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so for, for the older kids, it's a lot harder to move up in belts. But, you know, that's what we do. We focus. If we want to win, we got to just stay. We got to grind. So, so if Landon wants to be a black belt. Mm -hmm. When he's going to be a black belt. It takes he, like 20, 30 it years it takes or something lot, it takes, like that. It takes about 10, on, but he's younger. Really? He's, if you're doing from 10 years to get a black belt, on average. Okay. That's like if you're training every day, if you're practicing. Mm -hmm. But Landon's going to take him. He's going to be a black belt by 19, 20. Watch. I mean, he's a savage. For sure. But, okay, so that's his end goal. So now he's going to reverse engineer my goal. How do I get to that goal? Okay, well, I need to be able to compete. I need to be able to do this. I have to train X amount of days. I need to, so it's like there's a blueprint. Yeah. You know, now let me speed up that blueprint. Let me hire a coach to train two times more than what these other people are training. So if it mm -hmm. takes the normal person 20 to 15 years, it's going to take me seven no, to 10 years. No, because he's with this guy. I'm going to fast track my way to success. Bro, and I'm going to keep paying this guy until my kids are like animals. Yeah, yeah but that's how life is, though. Because you, you have an end goal. Okay, I want to make X amount of money. Mm -hmm. I want this for myself. Okay, so I need to make this much money. What do I need to do? I need to create a business and supplements, okay? So yeah. now you get a guy that did that. So you, I'm sure your UFC fighter is a black belt, correct? Both so, of them. So you get a guy that is a worth however money you're trying to make in the same industry you're trying to do it in, mm -hmm. and you just pick their brain. Hey, what did you do to get there? Mm -hmm. so help me speed up my way to success, and that's it. Not and only then you put in the work. is he a black belt, but he's like a five-stripe black mm -hmm. belt. He is one of the world's best uh, jiu-jitsu fighters. He was just in Dubai. For sure. They only pulled the I best know, yeah, in the like, world. Abu Dhabi's crazy. Yeah, yeah, And so, you know, the fact that Landon has direct access because I was willing to work, I was willing to do all of these things, I was willing to do more. Like I said, I had a conversation earlier. I'm like, people don't understand the grind. They just want the benefits. And if you just want the benefits, just stay at your job. I'm telling you because this is brutal. It's taxing. You're going to cry. I leave not so hot, but me. You're going to cry. You're going to be frustrated. Things are going to go wrong. You anticipate that you're going to work a lot and all of these things. And But in the end, man, I'm starting to see the fruits of my labor. I'm like, we up. We up. And then we are, You know, with Asia. So, you know, I mentor Asia, right? Mm -hmm. So I told her, we're going to develop this thing that she wants to do. I'm like, I got you because I'm a beast with that. So that's what we're going to go do. But anyways, I told Asia, yo, why don't you come with me to Colombia? Because, you know, we're going to shoot up. content. What yeah. the heck? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just like, man, like when you start seeing the fruits of your labor, like all of that stress, all of that uncertainty, all of that, like, oh, man, I don't know if this is going to work. All of those days of crying, all of those days where things were going wrong, they don't even matter. Yeah. But then side note. So right now. Okay, there's different tiers, right? So uh -huh. level one, you're you're at, looking at the mountain. There's a bear there. You're like, oh, you know what? That bear is kind of scary, but whatever. I'm just gonna keep going. Yeah. So then you get to it. Now you're at your place where you're like, oh, wow, it's nice. The water looks clean. There's, but then from this plateau, you just went up one plateau. You see the next plateau. Like, oh, that water looks a little fresher. Mm -hmm. Instead of a pond, that's a whole lake. Mm -hmm. Oh, dang. Oh, that that's a big old tree right there. Okay, let me get there. Then you see the another bear. Mm -hmm. But now this bear is kind of clawing at you a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the bear is like getting closer to you, about yep. to get you. You know, it's that's that external resistance. That's mm -hmm. the government. That's the um the the leak in the floor. That's the something happening to your business. But then you get past it. Mm -hmm. Then on this plateau, you see the next plateau. 
Like, and it's dang. always you always You're, have to grind, bro. Because when you get to high level, you see like, oh wow, that's a whole that's a whole lake of running water. Oh dang, yeah. that's a whole thing. Okay, I need to get there. That's a but then, white water rafting. <laughs> but then now that bear's coming at you and it's hitting you and this happened to you and just all these external things. It just it gets harder. It does get you know harder, but, it, but you get better. It does. Uh, yep. That's the good thing. Like, yes, it will be harder, but you're better than you were at level one. Now, the Rosa that was at level zero could not handle where I am right 100%. now. 100%. But every you day, that bear, you know? I couldn't handle that bear. But mm -hmm. now, I could grapple with you for a few minutes. And then if I lose, I'll come back, <laughs> yeah. grapple with you again. No, then you'll get past that bear, then there'll be another Correct. one. And you have to understand, these external battles... External resistances don't they don't leave you whether it's a lawsuit oh yeah whether it's um they the uh a regulation changes and now mm -hmm. you have to there's just so many things that can happen but you have to develop that grit to just keep going that's and get it. past it that's you know it. and so grit is having that resolve like if it's gonna be it's up to me you have to you and know? yeah well, we're gonna leave you guys with that you know success is available for everyone but it's not guaranteed. And you just got to show up every day, fight those external resistances, those internal res resistances, and you can have whatever you want. Period. Bye, guys. Woo! Yeah.